Hello guys, so today we're going to start how to implement 2D convolution or spatial filtering in FPGA. Uh, probably in this video we're going to have few labs because uh, I, I want to spend most of the time explaining to you guys how to do this very very important image processing algorithm and uh, after you guys visualize what the algorithm is is okay probably i'm going to also to jump a little bit in matlab to show graphically uh, what the convolution does and uh well any doubts you probably are going to continue a little bit also with the this theory in more videos before we jump into the into actually implementing the convolution block and uh, any doubts comment me on the on the messages and i hope you guys enjoyed if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, let's start it. Okay, guys, before we start in the theory, uh, I, I'm going to try to explain with images, okay, what we want to do here, okay? Imagine that we have an image, okay? By the way, is our uh, Lena image, okay? She's here. And uh, we want to enhance for instance the the edges of this image okay we're going to load something that we call a kernel okay and we're going to apply an operation called convolution between our image and in this case the kernel that we just load okay let me just change here something the contrast You see that now the cont the sorry the edges of the, the the image are more or less sharpened. Okay, the background is always gone or almost gone, and we have here something completely different. Now, for instance, imagine that we're going to use another kernel, the Sobel kernel in the in the y direction. Okay. Let me just change this here. Let me just check if we're displaying the, the whole dynamics. It's not. You see? Now here we enhance all the all the edges that were in the Y direction. Okay. Now just to finish, let's try something else. Let's try the with the impulse kernel, where you have everything zeros, just the center as one. And let's try again. Let's check if we miss something. Yeah. And we have again the original image. Okay, this, by the way, is the impulse kernel, which is the uh, imagine as the identity, the one. It will not change. It's, uh, it will not basically is a filter that will change nothing. Okay, so the idea of this uh, tutorial today is to give you the the basic theory behind the convolution. Okay, and how we can start to implement this into the FPGA. Okay, uh, now I'm going to switch to the board. Uh, this, day, uh, this tutorial, I actually went a little bit out of order because I would like to show you in pictures what this is all about before we deal with the, uh, with the theoretical part, let's say, like this, okay? Okay, so guys, a little bit of math before we begin. This is the, the formula, I would say, for the 2D convolution, okay? It's just a sum over every coordinate of your image, okay? And while you are... When you see these guys, read just four loops. It's simpler, you know? Don't, uh, don't be fooled by some mathematical symbols. So four loop in all rows, four loop in all codes, okay? Just read like this, okay? So between the image and something that we call the kernel, okay? Which is flipped. Okay, actually this is the base to do all the, uh, all the 2D image filtering 
like uh, Blur, Medium Filter, Sobo, Erode, Delete, and stuff like that. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to explain this mechanically, like in an animation. I will try to do my best to explain how this works, okay? So, so to the convolution. Imagine, guys, that we have a 3x3 kernel, okay? As we saw in the formula before, uh, this kernel here will be flipped. So, basically, if you could imagine, he's going to flip horizontally and vertically. He's going to be something like this, and then like this, okay? And we can consider it as this guy here, okay? So, imagine now that we have an image, okay? And the idea is that this kernel here will slide in all elements of your image, okay? He's going to do something like this for, for the first element. Actually, the kernel is going to be centralized in the, in the element. So, for instance, if it is in the element 1, the kernel will be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this like this or like this or in the other position as well but notice that while the kernel is in this area here he's totally out of the image not totally partially out of the image basically okay and in this case that we don't have a valid uh, valid values to calculate our convolution you can put them as zero okay but in this case here We have our kernel, okay, imagine that we are centered at this element here, the 6. You can notice that the kernel is completely inside the image. And in this case, we can calculate. And how we, cal uh, how we can calculate here? In this case, will be 1 multiplied by 1, plus 2 multiplied by 2, plus 1 multiplied by 3, plus 0, okay, these are uh, few with zeros, multiplied by 5, 6, and 7, here, okay, plus, uh, let me just bring a little bit down, minus 1 multiplied by 9, minus 2 multiplied by 10, and minus 1 multiplied by 11, okay? The same thing in this position here, also the kernel is completely uh, embedded in the image, and we can calculate again, okay? 1 by 2, 2 by 3, 4 by 1, uh, zero, by, uh, zero by six, seven and eight, minus one multiplied by ten, minus two by eleven, minus one by twelve. Okay, and the results are thirty-two. So actually, the result of the convolution between this image here and this kernel is something like this. I'm going to show this in the uh, in the in MATLAB, and uh, you see that actually the result is the same. Okay. The kind of filter that you're applied in your image actually is dependent on your kernel, okay? For instance, in this case here, if I want to remember, is the horizontal part of the Sobo filter, okay? And, uh, I mean, a blur filter, a medium filter, a row delete, they all kind of uh, have the same mechanism, okay? So, I'm going to show now something that is really important to implement this kind of algorithms in the FPGA. Uh, actually, we cannot have... Actually, we can, depending on the, size, on the size of the image, but it's not very practical. But we, can, we don't have the whole image inside the FPGA. Actually, what we do is to work in a stream fashion, okay? Where the pixels will arrive more or less like this. I mean, in a stream will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? And uh, those pixels will arrive in, a, in an IP block that have an, uh, an stream input, okay? And meanwhile, the values are going in our IP block, we're going to give the convolution result. So, to have this, we, we need to have some kind of memory, okay? And this memory is uh, created by, uh, uh, by something that we call line buffer, okay? Uh, in order to do the convolution, as we explained before in the board. So, we need to, uh, we need to, trans to transform 
the algorithm in a string fashion, okay? And one of the basic building blocks of doing, for doing this is using line buffers, okay? So, uh, imagine that we have one image, okay? And as I explained before, the string will come like in a row major fashion, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? So here, just one pixel at a time will pass in this zigzag way, okay? And uh, in parallel, okay, we're going to have this arrangement here. We're going to have two line buffers because we have a three by three kernel. So actually it's the number of calls or rows minus one numbers of line buffers, okay? And uh, actually the data will come here, okay? Imagine this really as delays, okay? So here is going to, uh, this value is going to be delayed like, uh, actually we have here four lines, so actually this is a delay of four, and this is a delay of four as well, okay? And at certain moment, all these buffers will be, uh, will be full, okay? And when this happens, we're going to have something that we call our window, okay? So the idea of, of all this is to, turn, is to extract this, is to have a window, okay, with the values of your image. In this case, let's imagine that here is our window, okay, and these values here that are actually going to be multiplied and accumulated, okay, depending on the on your kernel, okay. So this is going to later to be a multiply and accumulate with our kernel. Okay, so uh, the, actually the good news is that Vivaldo HLS has a kind of uh, class that deal especially on how to implement this guy here, okay? Well, guys, another structure that we can use with the line buffers is this one here, okay? Actually, we use one line, line buffer uh, more, okay? But this part here, is more simplified, I mean, it's more easy to code than the previous one, okay? Basically, we still have our image three by four, okay? By the way, for, uh, the width of the image is four, in this case here, so every uh, line buffer element, we have four, okay? So, uh, the image will come in a string way like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like this, okay? And you connect your line buffers kind of like this in cascade and you the, the simplicity here is this because you just uh, put uh, in cascade with the output of every line buffer just three uh, delay lines okay and these three delays, delay lines here is going to form your sampling window okay uh, a little bit more easy but again with this space of one line buffer line buffer more so if you have constraints of block run in your FPJ, maybe you just use the, the previous one, okay? So guys, after our line buffer created our uh, sampling window, okay? This sampling window will going to, uh, are, is going to be multiplied by your kernel, okay? And uh, by the way, is this operation here, okay? Imagine that you have here your sampling window, and this sampling window is multiplied by every element of your kernel. Okay, then the results of this multiplication can be fed to another tree, okay, in the case that you want to create a 2D convolution, okay. You can send this as well to a block where he's going to found the minimum value after this uh, sampling window by kernel multiplication, okay. If you do this, you have what we call it, an erode. And if you look for the maximum value of this operation here, we will have what we call a dilate, okay? These are the, the morphological operations. Base. Okay, guys, so at this point, we already know what is a sampling window, what's the line buffer, and let's just summarize what we're going to do in our IP core. Basically, this IP core will be able to, to perform the following operations, okay? Convolution, erode, and delete, okay? And it's more or less how he's going to work. We have our image, okay? Our image will arrive uh, in a string, okay? Following this pattern here, okay? Imagine that you have an image that has three lines uh, uh, and uh, four columns, the four widths, the, uh, the number of pixels in the width, 
Okay, so the image will come like this. We're going to have our line buffer, and uh, as we discussed before, the object of the line buffer is to create our sampling window. Okay, the sampling window then will be multiplied by our kernel. Okay, and the result of this multiplication is going to be fed to the to the operation block. And uh, as we saw before here. If it's just a tree of others, it's going to be a convolution. If it's going to be a block that is going to find the minimum value of, uh, of, our, uh, of our sampling window multiplied by the kernel, we're going to have an error. And if it's going to have the, the maximum value after this operation here, we're going to have a delete. Okay? Uh, the idea of this IP core is that it's going to, be, to give the result as soon or at least some uh, clock after you gave an input, okay, depending on the latency of this IP core. So basically this is a number crunching machine that is going to perform these operations in a stream fashion, okay. So uh, we're going to use the axis stream anyway. Uh, our DMA, we're going to push the data here and receive the, the pixel out, which is the, the, the result of the convolution erode and delete. Okay, okay, guys. So, uh, Vivaldo HLS gives you some helper classes to help you to implement line buffer and window. Okay, the most important, uh, you just include this guy here, uh, include hlsvideo.h, which is the HLS video library. Then you're going to have these two classes. Okay, HLS line buffer. Here in this case, we are creating the line buffer that we need for our case. Okay, so. Uh, three uh, rows for columns, okay? Then you have those methods here, shift it down or up, insert top or bottom, and get val. By the way, uh, if you don't understand now how these guys are going to be used, when you go to the lab, it's going to be clear for you, okay? And the HLS window, okay? In, this, in our case, three by three, uh, as we're dealing with uh, grayscale images, sharp would be better than standard sharp. So, uh, the methods that you have here, get val, insert, uh, and shift right or left. Okay, get val, you have the parameters row and column. Insert, you have the value that you want to insert, row and column. And uh, with those guys, we're going to implement this IP core that we need. Okay?